Welcome to everybody who just joined. Thank you for joining us. We'll be starting in a minute or, a minute or two and then I'm gonna uh, record it on Facebook Live. Thank you, Ms. Casablanca for joining us. So it's setting up the meeting. I am just setting up the Facebook Live meeting, so it says we are not. Okay, it says we are now live on Facebook, so we'll start in another minute or two. We've got a couple people coming in to join us. Thank you for joining. Hello, how's it going? Good, thanks. We've got 21 participants right now, which is great. Thank you everybody for joining. And we're gonna start, we'll start in another minute or two. It's sort of like anything, everybody's gonna filter in, you know, we all have kids, so it's not easy to make something on time. Thank you for joining everybody who just joined us. Uh, we are on Facebook Live right now, so I don't know if anybody's joining us there. If you are, thank you very much. For those of you who joined, who joined us on Zoom, we have 23 participants right now, and we really appreciate you joining us for our first PTA meeting of the 2021 school year. So we'll get started in another minute or two. I don't wanna keep everybody too, too late, but also want to allow time for folks to jump in, and, you know, Okay. Um, all right, well, I've got four minutes past, so we'll give them, we'll give everybody another minute to join and then we'll start off, um, we're, good, we're just gonna do a quick roll call just so everybody knows everybody here. I mean, 
this would be similar to when we were if we were actually together in a room, we would actually be able to say hi and hello and oh, I haven't seen you in a while. So it'd be nice to get to know everybody, um, especially because I'm sure we have some new folks, some kindergarten parents who have just joined. I remember being one of those last year. So um, thank you. Thanks to everybody for joining. Um, okay, so um, we'll just wait another minute or so. Well, I have 705. So thank you everybody for joining. We really appreciate it. This is our first formal uh, Groveton PTA membership meeting of the 2021 school year. So thank you to everybody for joining. We've got the school administration. We've got Mr. Swagger, Mr. Latham and Ms. Casablanca joining us too. Thank you very much for the three of you for joining. We really appreciate it. Uh, and so uh, my name is Steve Van Tassel. I'm the current, the new president of the Groveton PTA. And I just want to thank you all for joining us. Um, we'll do a quick roll call. Um, probably, you know, we have folks on, we have folks on video. If you were on video, you can see those. And we have a lot, we actually have a, quite a few non-video participants. We have all 15 people who are just calling in or don't want to, don't want to be seen with the rest of us. So, um, <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll start. I just want to get, just to get to know everybody. My name is Steve Van Tassel. Um, as I said, I'm the new PTA president. Uh, I have one son. His name is Shane. He is, in, he is in first grade now. He's in the Spanish Immersion Program. And so uh, we love being part of the Groveton family. We live in Woodstone, um, right on the St Stony Brook Woodstone area. Technically Woodstone, but we're really closer to Stony Brook. Um, and so that's about me. So I'll just, I'm going to Try to, I'll try to go, I'll do the, the board members first. We'll, um, so Sierra, if you want to introduce yourself, this is Sierra Selman, she's the PTA secretary. Hi, thanks Steve. Um, this is Sierra Selman, I'm dialing in, and I am the new secretary, and I have one daughter who's in first grade, and her name is Evelyn Thomas, and I will be capturing uh, roll call. So I appreciate your help, thanks. Thanks, Sierra. Uh, we'll go next to George Newberry, who's, all, who's the PTA treasurer. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, my name's George. I have two children, Chester and Harriet. They're in second grade and kindergarten, both in the immersion program. Uh, in the Groveton neighborhood and looking forward to a great academic year, even given these circumstances. So we'll make the best of it. All right. Thanks, George. Uh, Mr. Swagger, everybody should know you, but if you don't mind introducing yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Jim Swagger. I am the principal at Groveton. Um, I myself have six children and um, I have uh, three still in elementary, one in middle and two in high school in the West Springfield Pyramid. So we're dealing with distance learning here at, at home as well. And, and um, just, just uh, probably like you all, my wife and I can't wait for the kids to get back to school, so. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Swagger. I'm always impressed that you have six children. With them. I'm always impressed by that. Uh, next, Mr. Latham. He's the new assistant principal at the school. Hi. Yeah, my name is Chris Latham. Um, I am the new assistant principal at Groveton, joining the team. Uh, I was at Groveton a few years back as a coach, uh, so I'm really excited to be back uh, on the team and excited to be, you know, here with everybody tonight. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Mr. Latham. And Ms. Casa, everybody knows Ms. Casablanca, so th thank you for joining us, Ms. Casablanca. You want to introduce yourself? Hello, hola. Um, my name is Ms. Cas it's Fran Casablanca. I am the other assistant principal. I'm proud to be a Grofton Tiger. I have two kids that are running around the house, so I apologize if you see them, like, <laughs> crossing the screen. But, um, yeah, I'm glad to be here tonight. No problem. We're all deal. Um, you're not the only one who has to deal with that. So thank you for joining. Uh, so we'll just go through the rest of the folks who've joined. I can only go by the only way I can do this is sort of by name. So uh, Aaron Brand, you are first. Sorry, but your name is Aaron. So that's what happens. If you want to unmute your if you want to unmute your line, Aaron, if you can and, and introduce yourself, that'd be great. If you can't, that's fine. Aaron's our son. Um, this is Sarah, Sarah and Tim Brand. We were on mute. Um, Aaron's our kindergartner, and um, Claudia's our second grader. Okay. 
Great. Thank you, Sarah and Tim, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, so next we have, um, sorry, I'm need, next we have Anna Bennett. Hi, Anna. Thanks for joining. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Anna Bennett, and I have three girls at Groveton, one in fifth grade, one in fourth grade, and one in second grade now. Great, thank you so much. Uh, next, we have Anthony. Anthony, if you want to introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, this is actually Anthony's parents. Um, it's amazing how much our kid uses Zoom now. He has his own uh, account, and we don't. But this is uh, Megan and Peter Arminti, or son Anthony is in second grade. Thanks, Megan. I, I thought that might be y'all, um, but I wasn't sure. So uh, next we have Chris G. Or is that your child's name? No, that is me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Garber, and I have a sixth grader, a fifth grader, and a kindergartner this year. Great. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Um, okay, uh, next we have E. Bayan. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Hi, I'm Edna Bayena, and I have two children at Groveton now. One is in kindergarten, and one is in fourth grade. Happy to be attending. Great. Thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate it. I hope I got your name pronounced correctly. Um, next, we have Faustina. Do you want to introduce yourself, Faustina? I hope I got that right as well. Yes. Hi, I'm Faustina. I have two kids, one in pre-K and one in kindergarten. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Greg Kimmit. I hope I got that correct. Sorry. Hey, everybody. This is Greg Kimmit. Uh, we have a son, Joaquin. He's trying to get right here. He's a fifth grader. <laughs> Great, thank you for so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, so um, now we've got a couple of folks who I just, I have a couple of folks who just say I have iPad, iPhone. So if your name is on, is it on there's iPad, if you want to introduce yourself, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, hi, uh, my name is, uh, Burkane. I have two boys, Amir, he's on the pre-K, and Maddie is on the fourth grade. Burkane, thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, then we have a couple of folks who just say iPhone. So if you want to jump on, if you have what says iPhone, and we appreciate you joining us. Thank you. I see at least one of you on the screen for me. Okay. Uh, there's somebody else who has an iPhone with a 202 number. If you want to introduce yourself, I don't want to give your phone number away, but. Hey, Steve, I think the one may be Mason's, Mason's family. If that's Mason's family, um, they can go ahead and turn their mic on and, and say, say hello. Okay. And Fox's family. Okay, great. Good. That's why it's good to have Mr. Swagger on this. He knows everybody. I do not. Um, okay, next we've got uh, Jen Steinbeiser. I hope I got that correct. Uh, no worries. It's Steinbeiser. Um, I have two kids, uh, Charlotte in kindergarten and Callie in second grade. Great. Thank you so much, Jen. I'll get these, per I'll get these soon. Once I, meet once I meet everybody in person, it'll be a lot easier. I won't I'm totally easier. used to it. No worries. <laughs> I am too. So thank you so much, but I try. Uh, next we have Kathleen Turk. Hi, I, um, I'm Kathleen. I have two new girls. Mr. Swaggart's there. Um, my daughter's in third grade and my son just started kindergarten. Thank Mr. Swaggart. Thank you. thank you so much for joining Kathleen, I appreciate it. Uh, next we have uh, Kristen Ullman. 
Hi, I'm Kristen Ullman. I have two kids. One is Richard, who's in kindergarten, uh, and then another one who's two years old and going to preschool. Very good. Thank you so much for joining us, Kristen. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Leah Goodman. Goodwin, sorry, pardon me. Hi, Leah Godwin with my husband, Zachary. Uh, we have a kindergartner, William, who started at Groveton, and we are a new um, military family to the area about a year ago. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Marina. Myrna, I'm sorry. If you want to unmute yourself and chastise me for not pronouncing your name properly, that is totally fine. Uh, if not, we have, next we have Mo, Mo Eldib, Eldib. Hi everybody, I am Lee with my husband Mo. I have two daughters. Uh, we are new in, in Grofton family. Uh, one is second grader and the other one is fourth grader. Great. Well, welcome to the Gro welcome to the Groveton community. You just moved here. Great. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, next, we have Monica Sanchez. Monica used to be one of the vice presidents of the PTA. Welcome, Monica. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Monica Sanchez, and very happy to be here and see the new team up and running. I have two kids, a third grader and a sixth grade grader. So. Um, yeah, just very happy to be here. Thank you, Monica, and thank you so much for all that you've done for Groveton over the years. We really appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Nazreen. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. This is Nazreen Ranjbar. I have uh, one uh, sixth grader and one uh, second grader in Groveton. Great, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, so coming, coming to the end, we have um, Cheryl Wilson. If I got that correct, your first name correct, I hope I did. Yes, you do. Oh, good. <laughs> Hello, I have two children at Groveton, a fourth grader and a second grader. Great, thank you so much. Uh, then we have Sam Samita Allen. Hi, yes, uh, Smeet Allen here with my husband, Chase. Uh, we have one kindergartner in the Spanish Immersion Program. Great, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We, we appreciate it. Glad you found us. Uh, next, we have Tabitha Beck. Hello, Tabitha. Nope, you, you need to unmute, Tabitha. Hi, I've got two kids at Groveton. Chester's a second grader, and here it's a kindergartner, and then one younger child as well. And I'm married to George Newberry, the treasurer. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tabitha. Appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Tran. She introduced herself in the chat. She said her mic's not working. Oh, okay. No problem. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, if anybody's joined who didn't get a chance, I, I tried to go in alphabetical order. I think a couple people joined. If you didn't get a chance to join or I didn't call on you, feel free, feel free to introduce yourself. We'd appreciate knowing you all. I mean, this is the best we can do at this time. So until we can all sit down in a room together and meet each other. Okay. Hi, I'm Phil Phyllis America, and I have a grandson in the fourth grade. Oh, great. Well, thank you, Phyllis. We really, really appreciate you joining us. You're welcome. Thanks so much. Uh, okay, well, now that we've done that, I'm, we're probably going to just go into, um, it was very nice. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for taking time out of your day to join us. We really do appreciate it. Um, so for, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to try to share my screen here. Pardon me while I do this on the fly. Share screen. Okay. So why is it not sharing? Can you help me? Why is it not sharing? Um, okay. Um, okay. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. So right now we're sharing, I mean, this is just our agenda tonight. So we did, just did the roll call. We're gonna do some introductions. Then Mr. Latham's gonna do a presentation on the iReady program. Then we'll do a quick overview of the PTA. And then we're gonna do something that we have to kind of do, sorry, it's official business. We have to review the 2021 budget and have the treasurer's report. Uh, and then George, the treasurer is gonna present some information about the grab and go meal meals and the pandemic EBT. Uh, and then at, at the end, it's an open discussion. You can ask anything, suggest anything. Uh, we just want, we want to hear from you because this is, you know, this is not my PTA. This is not, you know, a couple of folks PTA. This is the PTA for all the kids at Groveton School, at Groveton Elementary. So we want as many parents engaged and involved and we appreciate you doing that. And especially having a lot of new parents, which is great. I heard a lot of kindergartners out there. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, so just for quick introductions, um, you, you didn't get to see Sierra, that's Sierra Selman over in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, and you met George in the bottom left-hand corner. And then there's, for some reason, a bunch of photos of me because I didn't put this slide together. Uh, me with my family, my son Shane and my wife Melanie, who's sitting next to me. Uh, and we're happy to be your PTA board um, for this year. And if anybody's interested, we do have an open position of vice president if anybody wants to do that. And if you wanna participate, but don't wanna be on the board, you just wanna help out, just let us know. We're happy to have help. We, trust me, we are not here just to have the three of us running this. We want this, as I said, we want everybody to be participating as much or as little as you can. I mean, if you can only join meetings and pay dues, that's great. We appreciate that and, you know, and attend events where we can finally have some events. Uh, but if you're willing to do more, we'd love to have you. Thank you. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Latham so he can do a, give us something about the um, iReady program, which is new, as far as I understand, is very new. So I don't know anything about it either. So hopefully he'll be able to tell us all about that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to uh, share my screen also. Okay. Um, let's take a look here. There we go. Great. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes, great. Thank you. Perfect. Um, and I will, I'll send along these slides after the presentation. So um, if anybody missed or, or wants to take a look at these, they're, they're welcome to. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit first just about um, some general information. We at Groveton and, and Fairfax County in general um, really believe that our, our, what our job is, is to educate the whole child. So we're, we're not just a, about academics. We try to be about, um, you know, everything that makes a kid successful. And there's obviously a lot <laughs> that goes into that. Um, and so as I get down to talk about iReady and some of the specifics, that's uh, certainly a part of it. But um, this is always our, our focus and why, you know, we're here doing what we're doing. So what we try to do specifically at Groveton is, is we try to learn about the students. So you might have noticed these first couple of weeks, teachers really trying to spend time in small groups with kids and one-on-one, -on -one, you know, just trying to get to know them, um, trying to check in with them, trying to see how they are. Um, you know, some, some it'll seem like non-academic things, but that really is super important to the process, um, it, you know, of learning and obviously much harder now than it normally is when they're here in the building with us. Um, so we're putting a lot of effort into that. Teachers have also been reaching out and making sure we're connecting with families. And, and as we get into the first quarter here a little further, um, they're obviously collecting and they're going to be sharing um, data. So you know how, how your kids are doing um, and, and what things they can continue to work on to be more successful, you know, in, in school. Okay. And then, so iReady is a tool for us to use for screening in math. Uh, and in literacy. So when we talk about universal screening, we mean a test that's given to every kid for, for this. It's every kid in Fairfax County for the last, I wanna say th three or four, maybe years now, five years maybe. Um, and obviously normally we do this in school. Um, and this is, so you'll get a, a sort of behind the scenes <laughs> look as they, as they do this for the first time virtually at home. Um, 
what it helps us do is it, it helps us identify potential gaps in foundational skills in math and reading. And it helps us direct our efforts for differentiating that instruction based on needs and also intervening um, when there are gaps in the foundational skills for math or literacy that are most important. So some specifics about the tests. So students K through six take this test. Um, kindergarten is a little bit different and their window has not opened yet. For the testing, they give them a little bit of time to sort of acclimate to school and, and to learn how to use a computer before they roll this out for them. But the test window is open for grades one through six. Um, you'll get a little bit more information from your child's teacher tomorrow night at back to school night. And then they are planning to start the first um, of October at the earliest, some of the teams um, with the assessment. So there is a, like I said, a math assessment and a reading assessment that'll be assigned. Um, there are some follow-up assessments. So if the um, iReady assessment points that we maybe have a concern or we'd like to know more about how they're reading, there's a follow-up test that we can do for reading. There are also some follow-up assessments that teachers might do in math to get a little bit more information about their skills. Um, and teachers will reach out about that and they'll use some of that Monday time to do those um, and that small group time that's built in throughout the day. Um, one important thing, these tests are designed to challenge students. Um, the questions will be above and below their level. So if you are, you know, kind of monitoring how your student is doing on the test, you may see some questions that you say, why is that on the test for a second grader? That seems way too easy. Um, and you might, depending on what you see at the same time, think their questions are way too hard. And at any given time, that can be true. Um, so what happens is the computer adjusts the questions up and down based on what they get right and wrong to kind of find their level, to kind of find their sweet spot. So there will be things that are, um, you know, have never been taught in second grade that would be on a test for a second grader to see how much they know. And if they can go beyond what is, is in second grade, that gives us information. And if there are things that they're missing that maybe were covered before that in, in first grade, that also gives us good information to know, um, you know, how best to work with them. Um, this is a little more about the structure of the test. So every, every kid that takes the test gets 72 questions in reading, 66 questions in math. That seems like a lot, but obviously in the primary grades, the questions go much, much more quickly. Um, sometimes it's listening to letter sounds and choosing the letter that matches. That only takes a couple of seconds. So for, for kindergarten, this will take about 30, 30 or 45 minutes. Um, first and second grade, a little bit longer, 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and then obviously in grades three through six, um, they'll have a little bit more um, reading to do for the reading test. The math questions will require a little bit more um, working things out. So we'll take, we'll take them a little bit longer um, to get through. These are estimates, but these are a good gauge for how students uh, are, are doing. So if they're, take, if they're going much faster than that, uh, that's probably a concern. And if they're taking much longer than that, that's probably also a concern. Um, We'll talk about that here. So this is this is one big topic and, and um, on the last slide there'll be some additional resources for how to support kids at home as, as they're doing this. We, we want to encourage obviously kids to have a quiet space while they're while they're taking this test as, as best as we can. There are some um, you know audio directions that they'll be listening to so obviously they need to be able to hear those, they need to be able to uh, do their best work, you know kind of have a space to, to work on this. Um, and like I said, those time estimates, kids can also take breaks. This uh, test is not timed and it records their progress. So if they uh, need to take a break, if they log off in the middle, if something happens to their internet connection um, and, they're, and they're kicked out for some reason, um, their progress will be recorded. And the next time they log in, they'll be right back in the same place where they left off. Um, so that's also a good reminder sometimes for kids that you know, if something happens, their, their work is not lost because um, that can be frustrating. And then, like I said, reminding students about their pace. So if they are, um, you know, you notice they're going really quickly through questions, you might want to remind them just to slow down, take their time, do their best work. Um, if you notice students stuck on a question, this happens sometimes in our, in our upper grades, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, because they really want to answer that question. They really want to work out those math problems. Um, you know, giving them gentle reminders about choosing the best answer and, and moving on because it's not, a kind of a test where everyone is marked right or wrong. It really is trying to level them. So it is, it is adjusting up and down until we get 
sort of a sense of where they're, where they're working. Um, and then the last reminder, and you'll, you may have seen this already in some of the information we sent out, um, that's really important is just really allowing the students to answer the questions. And like I said, they are gonna struggle um, with some of the questions. They're gonna get some of them wrong inevitably. Uh, and, and like I said, that gives us very good information about where they're working and how best to work with them. So that's just a reminder um, we want to put out there and one that I, I know is especially difficult for all of us, right, to ever see <laughs> kids struggle and we want to jump in and we want to help and we want to um, get in there with them. So that's our, you know, sort of our plug for, you know, really letting them work through it to get uh, the best information we can to be able to work with them. Okay. And then here are some additional resources. And like I said, I'm going to send uh, these along in an, in an email after this. Um, there is a, a universal screener site from FCPS that has a couple of videos you can watch, cover some of the same information uh, that I just went through with you. Um, there, if you, there, you'd like to watch with your students and, and give them a heads up about what's coming, their teachers will also be doing some prep um, as they get ready to deliver it and giving them kind of an overview. Kids have taken this before if they're in the upper grades for sure. Um, so they'll sort of ha have a sense <laughs> of what this is and what this is about. Um, there is an at-home testing checklist that kind of goes through how you might check your system, if that's something you, you wanna make sure the computers are working and ready, uh, where kids can log in, uh, what information you might need, and, and all of that is available in this at-home testing checklist. Um, one more plug for this parent and student IT support site. Uh, so if there is an issue with the computer in the middle of the test, or you can't log in, or something is not working, um, that there is some self-help information there, and then there is contact information for um, the IT department to be able to get uh, you know, problems solved. Um, and then any test specific issues, you can contact your child's teacher or you can contact me. So if there, you have questions about the test or there's an issue specifically with the iReady test as students are working, um, you can definitely reach out to the teacher, you can definitely reach out to me and we can problem solve that on our end. Okay. And I'm going to stop the share because that's all the information I have. That's really the nuts and bolts of the uh, of the assessment here. Great, thank you so much, Mr. Latham. We really appreciate it. Um, so, if anybody has any questions, maybe we'll just keep those till the end. That way, we can kind of get through the rest of the meeting. I don't want to keep people too too long. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you being here and your time. Uh, so, the next thing I wanted to sort of do is just to do a brief. Um, and these are some slides that we've put together, a, a brief overview of what the PTA is, um, because, you know, you might, be, you might be wondering, you know, well, what have I gotten myself into here? Um, hopefully not, but um, so um, let me just share this. We've got a few slides. So basically it's like, what does the PTA do? Well, I mean, we make things happen, or we're going to try to make things happen, I should say. Uh, so we're going to host month, monthly, we're going to have monthly meetings. Um, we're going to do those over Zoom and Facebook Live so that we can keep you informed, just like Ms. Olatham did about the iReady program. We're going to try to help out with some things around going on at the school and help you sort of support your children's education. So, and if you have anything that you think might be a good thing for us to talk about at a meeting, or you'd like to see in the future, just let us let me know. You can send an email or talk about it at the end. So um, some of the things we've done so far was um, we organized the two town halls with the leadership about the, you know, sort of the rollout of the virtual schooling and determining the impact of COVID-19 on everything. And so, you know, we held, we held one at the beginning when we thought we were going to be choosing between virtual learning and in-person learning. And then we held one after that after the change was made to be all virtual to discuss that. Um, we've created the budget for this school year, um, which, we'll be which we'll be talking about and voting on a little bit later. And then we're really here to facilitate communication between the school, the parents and teachers and, every, and things like that. So, I mean, you know, we wanna, we wanna be a community as best you can be a community in sort of an environment where you can't see each other and talk to each other and be together. So we'll try to do our best to sort of keep that going it, so that when we can return to the school and have in-person meetings and see each other and do back to school night the right way, we'll all be there and we'll actually might know some of us in, in the meantime. Um, the other thing we do is we help raise money and this is important. Um, last year, we, I mean, we probably aren't gonna be able to have these things. Um, we had events like the Blizzard Bingo, which is a fun bingo night that they did in February right before the pandemic, right before schools closed down. 
and there's also a fall festival, which was a lot of fun that we did and unfortunately won't be able to do this year because it involves being, being with other people, which we're not supposed to really be doing. Um, and these, these are designed to help grow and support our teachers and staff, build a sense of community. Um, so if you have any ideas for fundraisers that you want to do or an event, like when, when schools are allowed to open an event that we could do that might, might not be on anybody's radar screen, please let us know. We want, we want to do stuff. We want to do fun things. We want to do educational things. We want to do things that'll help hopefully raise a little bit of money so then we can give that money to the school to do th so the school can do more things for our kids. Um, so that's what it's really all about. Um, so we have some bylaws. I think we have to kind of go over these, unfortunately. We'll, we'll try to be quick. Uh, really the purpose of the PTA, I mean, I don't have to read all this. People can read this, but I mean, we're here to, you know, we want to promote the welfare of children. We want to, you know, make sure everybody, you know, we're going to advocate for the PTA advocates for laws sort of on a grander scale than what we do here. But here, you know, we want to make sure that everybody, you know, kids are well taken care of that, you know, what we can do to help the school help them because, you know, it's not just up to the schools to do everything, you know, and it's not just up to parents to do everything. It's kind of a community and sort of, I think the PTA is a little bit of a bridge between that. Um, so um, we'll put this online so people can look at these on their, on their own. Uh, but, um, you know, and some of the things that we need to do to be in good standings is we have to adhere, adhere to policies. We have to have a minimum of three elected officers, which we have a minimum of three, but if you want to be one, Vice President's open if anybody's interested. Uh, we have to submit local bylaws, contact information. We have to fill out some fun forms. Um, we have to pay for, to be part of the, PTA, the P, part of the PTA and provide information to members who have joined the PTA during the reporting period. Um, so, you know, so in the, a lot of you have paid dues already and thank you very much for joining and filling out the form. I know it's a little difficult now. You, usually we hand them out and pass them in pass them out with the kids stuff that comes in, um, the, the folders that they get at school. For those of you who aren't familiar, usually they have folders uh, that they bring back and forth and that's how you, we communicate with you. But we don't have that right now. So uh, we're working through that. But um, just so you know, if you've joined the PTA and paid your dues, you're a member of now of the National PTA and the Virginia PTA. Uh, so the membership is open to everyone. Uh, you can be admitted anytime. So. You can join today, tomorrow, if you already joined, thank you very much. Uh, and the only thing is that if we're voting on something like the budget or some an election or anything like that, you do have to be a PTA member to, to serve and to vote on those things. Um, and then we have dues, they're $5 for a year. Um, the dues are not per family, the dues are per um, person, so per adult. So, um, and basically we don't keep a lot of that. Um, most of that goes to national dues, county dues, state dues. Um, and now that we're taking PayPal, uh, some of that money goes to PayPal to pay for that. So, um, but we do appreciate that and we're trying to make it easier. It's a lot easier than sending five bucks in the mail or writing a check out for $5. So we thank, pay we thank George for setting up the PayPal account. Um, so with that, I'm going, thank you, George. Uh, this leads straight into the fact that we have the budget and the treasurer's report to go over for right now. This is some of the official business, so pardon for the for the stuff. But this is usually what's done uh, at the beginning, uh, at the end of um, the end of the previous school year. But with the pandemic, we weren't able to do that. So now we're going to sort of do this right now. So without further ado, I want to turn it over to George. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. All right, let me start. If you stop sharing your screen, I'll start start sharing mine. All right, so actually before we get into the budget and the, uh, and the treasurer's report, we have to just go over the, the audit report from previous years. So it has to be presented to the local PTA. So this is the PDF that we received from our outgoing P, uh, treasurer, PJ. Uh, thank her for her time and her service. And if you'd like a copy of this, uh, we can, I can email it to you. But otherwise, I'm just here to kind of present it to you. It's basically, it's a quick audit that has to be sent to the Virginia PTA or done and then sent to the Virginia PTA just to kind of make sure everything's on the up and up and you know, money's getting schemed off. So we passed the audit just fine. 
And with that, I'm going to move on to the, bu the budget. Unless, if, unless there are any questions. If there are any questions, uh, you type them in the chat. So here's the budget for this year. Um, the template's based on what PJ sent me. And of course, with the COVID, we're not going to have you know, our fundraising efforts. Um, that being said, a lot of the money that was raised last year wasn't necessarily spent in the end. So we don't, the executive team at least uh, doesn't really mind dipping into those reserves uh, since they weren't spent last year. So I can just kind of go over the big items. Uh, we have to pay for things like banking fees. Um, of course, you know, like Steve mentioned, the national and um, Virginia PTA dues kind of come out of the dues that you pay. But we still have to account for those. Uh, you see, I, I put a big line in for donations. Um, personally, like I, I, I'm, I'm a math guy, and I, I think that we can probably raise more money from non-event activities this year if we want to, just to help uh, you know bridge that gap if we think we're going to dip in too far. Um, so this was here was just you know, quick math. If we have a, a goal, right? Not actually going to happen. Let's make a goal. Uh, Six thousand dollars would cover most of the operating expenses and and all of the you'll see below the kind of the programs that the PTA gives money to ends up being about twenty bucks a kid, um, just to, based on you know back of the napkin type math. But it's not unreasonable. Of course, we don't expect every uh, parent or you know uh, set of parents to chip in that much. Some might chip in more, some might chip in less. But I think if we have a goal, then we can at least you know make headway against it. Uh, we, we have to pay insurance, uh, and our website is, is lapsed, so we need to invest in re, repurchasing the domain uh, and probably a little bit of website setup. If there are any parents who'd like to volunteer to help run the website, organize the website, whether that's, uh, you know, we get the domain and then you do the web design or, or whatever you want to work at, uh, we'd be happy to help with that because that's, you know, one more additional task that kind of falls off our shoulders onto yours. <laughs> Let's see, uh, we did put in a little line uh, for uh, if we need to have any large Zoom meetings. I think Steve's account he has set up here goes up to 100 people uh, and up to an hour. So if we had to have larger meetings, just a little buffer for that. So now getting down to the, and I'm gonna just, let's kind of zoom in here. No, no. Uh, events, fundraising, and most of these are zero because the pandemic, but uh, ideas we had to fun run spirit wear um, amazon smile we last year we got in the august we got 67 dollars from amazon smile so if you shop through amazon you uh, select growth and pta on the amazon smile when you make for your purchases and you'll get a little, we'll get a little bit of that money uh, we've also had a lot of restaurant fundraisers last year uh, we need to help pe for people to organize we need people to help organize that if that's something that we want to use for fundraising activities again that was like mo's El Paso, um, I forget what the other ones were, but those are fun, but we need help organizing them. So the social programs, typically the PTA hand, um, gives out grants of $500 per grade level, um, and that's kind of split between all the classrooms. The teachers get to uh, kind of use those funds as they need to. I don't know much more about, about it beyond that. Um, Mr. Swagger, maybe you can speak to it later about how you've seen that money um, go where it's gone to over the years but this is kind of the standard annual budget that the pta follows uh, also immersion gets money and we added in a little added an item for music programs this year uh, just because we've, we've heard that there's some a lot of extra fees associated with the music program we thought maybe that's a good place where we could uh, put some funds to support uh, let's see going down uh, again these are more like historical line items that might not be applicable now and then a uh, final kind of line items to exp or expenses or appreciations, you know, staff appreciation gifts and uh, staff appreciation lunch. Appreciation lunch. And that probably be in the spring, uh, you know, depending. So you can see we're in the red right now based on that budget, but we're, and we even be in the red more, but again, we're, we raised a lot of money. A lot of money was raised, was raised last year that wasn't spent. So that's the budget that, we, that we've come to this year. And yeah, then Blizzard the Bingo, treasurer the, the fundraisers Blizzard Bingo every year, and Blizzard Bingo was in late February, and then the school was everything was shut down about mid March. So there's really no time to spend that money that we had raised. So, and then just sort of where we are, and this 
is you know, this doesn't count for any membership dues received yesterday or today. Um, we had started September just over 29,000. Uh, we wrote some, had donations. Thank you for all the people who have donated. Uh, even, you know, the dues or paid the dues and also those who donated more than the, the $5, I think. And we paid one of the insurance uh, amounts, that's $405. And then these are just amounts that we have to, you know, expense at some point. So these are kind of how the breakouts were for Fairfax County dues, uh, Virginia PTA national dues. So in the end, we're just around $29,000 uh, in the primary bank account. So and we have a PayPal account now. We set that up at the beginning of the month. And basically every month, I'm just going to sweep that back into our, our main bank account. So I'm not going to really report the balance there. I don't really think we need to do that uh, for this treasurer's report. Great. And thank you. I think that's all I have on that, Steve. OK, great. Well, thank you so much, George. We really appreciate you, your efforts in doing this. Um, so I think we, we do need to officially pass the budget uh, for to, to keep going on. So um, it's a virtual environment. I'm not sure how we're going to really do this, but I guess uh, everybody's, everybody's kids probably know how to, um, how to, how to um, raise their hand. So if you could, so if everybody who's in favor of the budget could raise their hand, we'd appreciate it. Um, I think, or give a thumbs up, any sort of, we've got people raising, I see we've got people raising their hands. So thank you. Um, I'm one of those ones who doesn't really know how to raise your hand, I'll be honest. <laughs> you press the action button and then it gives you a choice of what to put up. Which button? I'm sorry. It says reactions down at the bottom next ah. to share screen record reactions. Okay. So I get, okay. So great. So I got a few thumbs up here. Um, I know it's hard. Is it? I guess the other way, since we've got a lot of people on the phone, are there, do we have any objections to anything that's in the budget or any objections from anybody who's on the phone? Going once, going twice. Great, thank you so much everybody for doing this. Um, so thank you, um, so thank you, George. And we'll go back to George now. George has some information. Uh, some folks, um, you know, FCPS offers grab and go meals. And also um, some people, I, you know, I know myself, we got what was called a EBT card, which I had no idea what, what it was about. And so uh, George has put, I'm, I don't know if other people have gotten that and wondered, what is this about? What is this thing here? So George has put some, together some information for everybody about that so you can learn a little bit more about it. And you know, if, if you need to take advantage of those, of those benefits, then you can do so. And if you know somebody, maybe you can't, don't need them yourself, but you know a friend or a neighbor who might be, be wanting to, you know, might need those services and you can provide them to them and get some information about it. So I'll turn it back to George, thank you. All right, thanks Steve. And so the, just kind of the two topics I was gonna discuss was the grab and go breakfasts and lunches and the pandemic EBT. Um, you know, we get the school emails, but I just wanna give a firsthand experience in case you haven't done it, it's really easy. It's you drive up to Groveton in school in the morning. It's between 640 and 650. I know that's early. Um, there are other options. And they, you just drive up. You say how many meals you need for how many kids you have. And you get a bag of meals. And that bag normally has milk. Uh, you know, there's breakfast and lunch. And there's vegetables. Uh, you know, like a peanut butter jelly sandwich or a pizza or chicken sandwich. Milk and a chocolate milk. Pretty, very simple, very straightforward. Enough nutrition for your, for your kids for your breakfast and lunch. Although mine normally have the breakfast as like a second breakfast. <laughs> and, and then also there's other two other pickup locations pretty close by if you can't make that early morning um, bus route at Groveton. Um, the first one's Bucknell, it's across Route 1. Um, basically, if you go down Memorial uh, and then kind of scroll around, it's, it's a mile away from Groveton, or a mile and a half away from Groveton. We used to walk there during the summer to pick up the, the breakfast and lunch. And then there's also High Blue Valley. I haven't been to that one. I've been to the Bucknell one. Um, but I imagine it's the same setup. And also I, I saw a note that High Blue Valley is going to have afternoon snacks and supper, meal, supper meals starting this week um, available too. And there, there's plenty of information on the county uh, website. Um, they have different bus routes, 
bus route being, you know, the food out of the back of the bus. Um, so take advantage of that if you need it. Um, it's not, you know, gourmet quality food, but it's decent and the kids enjoy it. For us, it was more of a routine thing because the kids are always looking forward to routine. And that just helped with the kind of stability during the pandemic. Second thing is talk about the pandemic EBT benefit. We got in the spring, you know, the little debit card and that had, uh, it was amount based on the students that you had that were registered, right? So if you had six kids like Mr. Swagger, you probably got, you know, a couple grand. Um, I'm joking a little. <laughs> and I think I have two kids, I think it was like 300 and something. The nice benefit. In addition, if you take that to the local local farm, farmers markets, they'll double it up to twenty dollars a time, right? So you, um, we go down one Saturday. So spending four, twenty dollars, you can spend forty dollars, and they give you these little tokens um, to spend those on fruits and vegetables. So it's a little extra way to, to stretch the, the, your dollar. And the website shows too that the the Virginia PTA or sorry, not PTA, the Virginia benefit website says that it's good for one year. Um, from when it was issued, right? So it'll be good till next spring. So, so try to use it up, you know, be, um, if you want to. And if you don't want to use it, they say just just rip it up, tear it, tear it up. And just a little map, just kind of show you where some of the farmers markets are around. If you, if you, if you're not aware, there's Old Town in Alexandria up here. Um, there's the Mount Vernon one uh, down here at Sherwood Hall. They're pretty small. They're on they're on Wednesdays. And they're probably gonna, they're gonna go through December. There's a Springfield's Farmers Markets, Wharton, and this Acadia Arcadia Farmers Markets. I, that was a mistake. They they do mostly mobile markets in DC, so please ignore that one. I did this, yeah, ignore that one. But I've been to the Old Town and to the the uh, my, well, my wife goes to the Old Town and to the uh, Mount Vernon one, and it's a fairly straightforward process. To, to isn't get. there still one in Kingstown on Friday evenings? There, so there's other markets in the area, but this is the these are the markets that it lists as the benefit being good at, uh, right? So there's like a West End market in Alexandria on Sundays, but the website didn't show it being accepted at that market. So that's all I have on the, on the food benefits, Steve. Great. Well, thank you so much, George. I appreciate it. So um, we'll also post that information on the Facebook page. So if you need to take advantage of it you know you have that information if you know anybody who might need to take advantage of it you can forward that information along to them and stuff like that i mean you know um appreciate that appreciate that do everybody doing that and um so the last thing um just gonna just gonna show um one last one last thing and then we'll be done um so we've got so now we can go to open discussion and anybody has any questions. And just so everybody knows, I'm sure most everybody is a member of the PTA, the PTA Facebook page. If you aren't, it's Groveton Elementary PTA. We do have a Twitter, which we don't really do too much with, but we can start doing that. And if you ever have any questions, you can email me. It's Groveton PTA president at gmail.com. And I'm happy, I try to check it every, at least every day and try to respond to people's questions and stuff like that. But um sort of the goal was to try to get everybody out by uh by nine by eight i'm sorry eight o'clock and i think we did that but if anybody has any questions anybody wants to stay on the line you have questions for myself or for george or uh, i don't know if mr swag if any of the mr swag or mr latham or miss casablanca can stick around for this um if you have any questions feel free to jump in and answer and if not thank you for joining we'll try to do this on a regular basis um we're going to try to send set up a regular time, week, monthly time where we do this. This was sort of an ad hoc meeting because we needed to do one at the end of September. Um, but hopefully we'll set up a time. And if you can't join that time, we're gonna, we're gonna have these all on Facebook Live so you can rewatch it. And we also have a YouTube website that we can post these meetings online. So if, you, if there's some, a topic that you wanted to get, you wanted to hear some talk about, if you wanna re-listen to Ms. Olatham's thing about the, I ready program, um, you know, or tell somebody else about it, they can go to our web, our YouTube page. So uh, thank you all for joining. Thank you all for coming to the meeting. Thank you to those of you who have joined. We really appreciate it and um, have a good night. Thank you so much. Um, feel free, I'll stay on for a little while and answer some questions if anybody has any. But have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Steve. Have a good meeting.
Thank you. Hey, Thank you. Hey, Steve. Um, yes. Just going back to the original question that Tabitha Beck had, she had one for Chris Latham on iReady, and she was asking about how much notice teachers will be giving parents about the testing. Yeah, and I saw someone answered that um, their children's teachers had already reached out. So most teachers should be reaching out this week um, to let you know when that's starting, when, when their class is actually going to start the, the assessments, because it will be a little bit different class by class, potentially. Um, our staff newsletter actually goes out on Wednesdays, so I am going to add um, a note in there as well about making sure that teachers are reaching out and giving notice for when their uh, classes are planning to start. So if you haven't gotten that already, um, you should be getting that this week. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Chris, that, that I already test would be during asynchronous work though, correct? Yeah, so we're um, asking teachers, that's also gonna depend a little bit on the grade level, the age of the students. So uh, younger students are going to need a little bit more help um, getting logged in, making sure everything's working. So they're going to start that during synchronous time and they'll probably re release into asynchronous time. Um, the, in the upper grades, they'll probably spend less time <laughs> talking about it and, and doing it since the kids have done it most of the time um, together already. And that will be mostly asynchronous time for, for older students. Um, there are some supports available for kids who need a little bit more support, who need maybe need a little bit more monitoring or more reminders. Um, so definitely, if you have any questions about additional support, reach out to your to your child's teacher. Yeah, we, um, we, we, we've heard from a couple of other schools who just started it this week um, that it's taking a, a good bit longer than they had uh, initially uh, anticipated. Um, and some students are having to do it over multiple sessions um, so, so it, it will most likely be done during the asynchronous time, but like, like Mr. Latham said, there, there is going to be some, uh, time taken to get it up and running, um, during, during their, um, blocks and, um, it, it, it don't be surprised if it takes more than one session to get it finished. Thank you, Mr. Slogger for that. Did anybody else have any questions for myself, Ms. Olatham, anybody else? Hey, I just want to put a plug in. Don't forget, tomorrow night is back to school night. You should be getting the links from your teachers. Um, there's a riveting message from Mr. Latham, Ms. Casablanca and I at the beginning. Um, and um, there's, a, there's a good opportunity to ask questions at the end of the sessions of the teachers. So um, please, if you get the opportunity, please um, try to attend back to school night. Oh, somebody did have a question. I see, is back to school night recorded? Um, yes, so it will be, so the teachers are recording their sessions um, and they will post them after, um, they, they'll send them out to their families after uh, after back to school night tomorrow. So probably uh, Thursday morning, they'll get, uh, families will get the link to be able to watch the video. Great, thank you so much. I guess we'll see you and yourself, Mr. Latham, Ms. Casablanca, and maybe some folks tomorrow for if you're in the same class. So thank you so much. Okay, well, I'm, I can stick on the line for a little bit. I know we're, we're rapidly losing people, but um, if you do have any questions, and if you have a question, but you don't feel comfortable asking it in front of other people or anything like that, you can feel free to send me an email about it. Um, I can, you know, and I'll answer it as best I can or get the, get the information passed along to the person who can answer it, but uh, feel free. We're here, we're here to help. If you need help, we're here to help. So uh, don't hesitate, really don't hesitate. So thank you so much, everyone. Hey, and before we do get off, I, I do want to say thank you, Steve and George and Sierra for putting this together. This was excellent. Um, you know, everything's a little bit more of a challenge these days doing, doing it virtual, and this went really well. So thank you all for, for putting this together tonight. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I see some people are still on, but I'm not sure if they have questions or we're just slowly get we're slowly getting off so uh thank you very much and have a good luck i'll see i'll sure i'll see you all tomorrow night on 
my son's back to school night and <laughs> sometime in the future. So thank you for thank you to Mr. Latham, Mr. Swagger, and Ms. Casablanca for joining us. We really do appreciate your participation as thank always. You. Yeah. Thank you everybody for coming. Okay.